BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. All right, we're back. Man, I'm excited for this card. I've been waiting for this card for a long time. This is the card that should have been on the sphere. And at first, they actually wanted Taporia and Holloway on the sphere card. For some horrible reason, they, you know, they really wanted to see what Sean O'Malley could do and see if he could be that next superstar. So they put Sean O'Malley in that main event and he did not live up to it at all. I assure you, this won't be the case in this fight. This fight is literally going to be fireworks just stylistically. Both guys like to come in there and bang. So we got UFC 308 at the Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi. This fight is unreal. This whole card is actually unreal, to be honest with you. I just wish this card was later on, that regular pay-per-view time, right? This is the type of card where you call over your buddies, you you have a big party, and you, you're watching it. That's how good this card is, right? And the fact that it's you know starts at seven a.m. I like to watch all the fights, so I'm I gotta watch to start at seven a.m. and then eleven a.m. I'm not a fan of that, not a fan of that at all. Clearly, they're trying to cater towards um, the people in the UAE, right? If this was in England, I assure you, the people in England will be <laughs> literally sleeping and probably staying up till five in the morning or whatever it is, because. In England, for example, that last pay-per-view, they, they made Leon and Bilal fight at whatever it was, 5 in the morning, just so they can cater towards the North American fans who usually buy most of the pay-per-views. I'm assuming maybe a lot of people in Abu Dhabi, I don't know the numbers, but maybe the people in Abu Dhabi don't care to you know, uh, pirate and live stream fights. They're probably buying pay-per-views out there. I don't know how it works in Abu Dhabi. Um but clearly, if you want to watch the pay-per-view here the right way, you got to buy the pay-per-view. And it, it, these are getting expensive now. If you got two pay-per-views in, a, in the month of October, that's you know ninety bucks a pop. You're you're spending close to two hundred bucks just to, just to watch fights. But I assure you, this pay-per-view will be well worth it. So a little unfortunate it's so early in the morning, but it is what it is. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, Ilya Taporia taking on Max Holloway. This is interesting, man. And the most interesting, crazy part about this fight is the odds. The disrespect towards Max Holloway. Check that out. Plus 200. Last time I checked my gambling site, it was plus 220. Um, in my opinion, that's disrespectful. I'm not going to lie. Max Holloway is the real deal. They must have forgot. Did they not watch UFC 300? Did they not watch Calvin Cater box uh, with Max Holloway, best boxer UFC, baby? little disrespectful, I'm not going to lie. Max Holloway is coming off two of the best performances maybe in his career. I mean, knocked out Chan Sung Jung, and you guys are going to be like, okay, Chan Sung Jung's over the hill. Sure, I'll give that to you, but what about Justin Gaethje? Is he over the hill? Was he not coming off the biggest fight win of his career, knocking out Dustin Poirier with a head kick? You know? That's crazy. Plus 200? That's disrespectful. I mean, Taporia is good, but I mean, his biggest win is over Volkanovsky, who literally came off a horrible knockout and didn't even take time to recover. Right? Volkanovsky, let's see, he took the fight with Volkanovsky in February 17. Right? And. You know, just a few months earlier, he got knocked out by Islam Makachev. You need to take time off when you get knocked out that bad. You need to take time off. And then, you know, you go in there with Taporia, get knocked out. I mean, don't get me wrong. That's a huge, huge feather in the cap of Taporia beating Volkanovsky. is something Max Holloway couldn't do. But I do believe if Max Holloway fought the same Volkanovsky that fought Taporia coming off a horrible KO loss to Islam, I think that... I would have took Max Holloway on that one, man. Max Holloway is the real deal. Now, I will give the edge to Taporia in the grappling department. Uh, his jiu-jitsu is very good, high-level black belt. His wrestling is okay. It's not the highest level of wrestling, but he can wrestle and he can take people down. But Max Holloway is really good takedown defense. Max Holloway is no slouch in the wrestling department or in the jiu-jitsu department. He's got pretty good submissions as well. 
Yeah, so honestly, um, if this was even odds, then sure, I might be leaning towards Taporia, right? Because Max is going, he went up in weight to 155. Now he's got to cut all that weight back to 145. And he actually did bulk up to 155. He was actually looking pretty good and big at 155. Now he's got to lose all that weight, go back to 45. But Max Holloway's never been a really guy who's missed weight or had issues making the weight at 45. He's always looked real good at 45 man and a lot of people thinking Taporia is going to knock out Holloway he's never been knocked out these Samoans are as tough as nails and he could take a shot man and he could give a shot just ask Justin Gaethje my pick for this one I'm going with the plus 200 underdog just because of the odds do you everyone's counting out Holloway I disagree man do not count out Max Holloway he is the real deal if you want to disrespect him by giving him plus 200 odds, then, you know, you know, be my guest. But if you guys, let's say you guys are like, no, Taporia is going to win. I'm feeling Taporia. Cool. But I suggest if you're going to bet Taporia, it's not worth it to bet minus 250 or minus 280 now on some sites, close to minus 300. It's not worth it. Um, but if you're really feeling Taporia, I would suggest betting Taporia to win by decision. I don't see him knocking out Max Holloway. He does have heavy hands, don't get me wrong, but Max Holloway got that iron chin. And if Josh Emmett can make it five rounds, I can assure you Max Holloway is much better than Josh Emmett. Um, yeah, a little disrespectful on that one, not going to lie. This one is a crazy, crazy fight. Hamzat Chimaev taken on, you know, might be one of the toughest fights of his career. And the Reaper, Robert Whitaker, probably the best striker Hamzat has ever fought. Now, he has fought better grapplers, right? Gilbert Burns, Jiu-Jitsu World Champion. Uh, Kamaru Usman, um, Division Two National Wrestling Champion. Very high-level grapplers. So, both those guys, I would say, are better grapplers than a Whitaker. Whitaker is a high-level black belt, and he's got good takedown defense, but not the level of a uh, Kamara Usman takedown defense. He doesn't have that wrestling background like an Usman. It doesn't have the jiu-jitsu background as of a uh, Gilbert Dorino Burns, right? Gilbert Dorino Burns has a crazy uh, jiu-jitsu background, high level. But Robert Whitaker is probably the maybe the best striker Hamzat has ever going to been there, been in there with. And um, which to note this fight is 5 rounds. So if this fight goes past three rounds, you're going to have to start to favor Robert Whitaker because Hamzat Chemaev is known for blowing the gas tank and, you know, sort of getting a little tired in those later rounds. And especially a five rounder, you got to be careful. He's got to go out there and finish Robert Whitaker. And Robert Whitaker looked real good. His last fight knocked out Ikram Aliskarov, who, you know, also got uppercutted, knocked out by Hamzat Chemaev as well. And uh, Whitaker, he's only really lost to the top guys, right? Lost to Izzy Adesanya twice and lost to Drikus Duplessis. Other than that, he's been phenomenal, man. So he lost to Drikus and lost to Izzy. Other than that, you know, he's been, yeah, man, he's real good, Whitaker. Whitaker is, and, you know, only 33. Whitaker has accomplished a lot, only 33 years old. And uh, Whitaker is going to be having his hands full because Hamzat Chemaev is a monster. Especially that first round. Hamzat Chemaev is going to come out and crush Whitaker in that first round. Um, hopefully he can get the finish um, because Whitaker, he's tough and you don't want him going in those later rounds with Robert Whitaker, that's for sure. Uh, my pick on this one is I'm going to go with Hamzat Chemaev. I think he's going to be able to get it to the ground in the first round, and I think he's going to either get the ground and pound or um, maybe a submission win. I think I'm uh, going to go with Hamzat. And to note, Hamzat fights really good in Abu Dhabi. I don't know what it is, but he's really good in Abu Dhabi. So that's to note because uh, it's sort of like his backyard, you know, the um, Ramazan Kadyrov, all those guys are going to be there. Everyone's going to be focused towards Hamzat Chmaev getting better. Um, so I, the fact that it is in Abu Dhabi as well, I'm leaning towards Hamzat Chmaev. I can assure you, if this fight took place somewhere else in the states, Hamzat would not be as big of a favorite as he is. But Abu Dhabi, a little different story. Um, crazy. This one's interesting. Larone, undefeated Murphy. Taking on Dan 50K Ige. I really like Dan Ige, and he really did a, 
um, took a fight on three hours notice against Diego Lopez his last fight. And that was a good, good fight, man. Dan Ige is for real. Tough as nails, hits hard. Um, the thing is, Lerone Murphy's just a little bit, a little better everywhere. I think he's just a little more well-rounded. And he's got an eighteen-fight win streak. If you conclude the amateur record, he's well-rounded. He can grapple. He can strike. He's a very good striker. It's um, he's probably going to be just picking Danny Gay apart. But Danny Gay's super tough. If I were to guess how this fight's going to go, I would probably think Lerone Murphy's going to win a unanimous decision on this one or a split decision. So I'll, I'll go with Lerone Murphy by decision just because Danny Gay's so tough. I don't think you're going to submit him, and I don't think you're going to knock him out either. So I'd take Lerone by decision, and Lerone's sort of known for going to decision. His last three fights have all been decision wins. This one's interesting. Magomed Ankalaev taking on Alexander Rakic. This one probably should be in the position of Larone and uh, Danny Gay. Probably should have been a little uh, reverse there, but it is what it is. Main card. Ankalaev, absolutely phenomenal. Probably the best wrestler in that division by far. These Dagestanis can wrestle other than Shara Bullet, which we will get to after. And if uh, Ankalaev wins here, minus 400, he, he's getting the title shot with uh Poetan and that's might be Poetan's kryptonite but who knows because um that's a whole nother fight but Alexander Rakic is very very good he's a good fighter but he's coming off a horrible horrible performance uh actually last two performances right the one before that he got a leg injury with Jan Blakowicz it was a close fight um, I think it was 1-1 going into third, and then in the third, he suffered a leg injury. Okay, I'll take that one out. Well, let's not count that because it was an injury. And then his last fight, he fought Yuri Prohaska, who's an absolute monster, and uh, KO'd Rakic. So he's coming off probably one of the hardest fights, you know? Like, that was a bad knockout. Now you're coming back against Ankalaev, who's arguably even better than Yuri Prohaska. Maybe not in the striking department, but... Yeah. That's tough to say because Uncle Ive can really strike, man. He He's a very well-rounded fighter. He can wrestle. He can strike. Um, he's got submissions as well, but doesn't use it too much. But, uh, yeah, you got to go with Uncle Ive. How can I bet against him? I mean, I think this one is probably going to go three. I would take Uncle Ive maybe by decision. Uncle Ive is very patient, but I wasn't impressed with his fight with Jan Blakowicz. I was not too impressed, and... Alexander Rakic had a close one with Jan Blakowicz as well, which tells me this fight is going to be closer than a lot of people think and a lot of what the odds makers are giving it. And if Ankalaev loses to Rakic, now that title shot with um, Poetan goes out the door. Out the door, and then that sort of throws up that whole division in limbo. Because can you really give Rakic a title shot if he beats Ankalaev? Yeah, like he beats Ankalaev, right? But he's lost two in his last three. Like, he lost against Blakowicz and Yuri. Like, can you really give him a title shot after beating Ankalaev? I mean, Ankalaev's the man right now in that division, so I don't know. That's up to the UFC, but you got to go with Ankalaev. This one's interesting. The Bullet, Shara Bullet, taking on Armin Petrosian. So, if you guys don't know who Armin Petrosian is, his brother, Giorgio Petrosian, was one of my favorite kickboxers to watch growing up as a kid. Giorgio Petrosian, K1 kickboxer, super, super high level, one of the best kickboxers ever. Um, just phenomenal striker. And Armin Petrosian is the brother of Giorgio Petrosian. And he is a monster. Glory kickboxer. Very high level. His ground game is not so good, but fortunately for him, Shara Bullet doesn't like to take it to the ground. Even though he's a Dagestani, he doesn't like to wrestle, right? And Armin Petrosian has a hard time with grapplers, right? His only, like, his last two losses was against Chabo Halo, Kyle Bohalio, and Hadolfo Vera, both jujitsu guys that just took him to the ground and out grappled him, right? Kyle Bohalio just out grappled him for three rounds. And then Hadolfo Vera, Jiu Jitsu world champion, submitted him, took him down. But Shar Bullet is the exact opposite. He's gonna go in there and use his kickboxing. And now you're gonna kickbox with a glory kickboxer. Hot, one of the highest level of strikers in the UFC. Armin Petrosian's a monster in kickboxing. Um very high level kickboxer. 
that's why I'm going with the underdog on this one. I'm going to go with Armin Petrosian on this one. I just think styles make fights, right? Styles make fights. And you're fighting uh, Giorgio Petrosian's brother, legend, kickboxing legend. And, um, yeah, I'll go with the underdog on that one. Armin Petrosian. And odds makers know that. He's only plus 155. They're not stupid at all. This one's interesting. Jeff Neal taking on Rafael Dos Santos. Uh, I'm going to go with Jeff Neal on this one. I'm not even going to get into it too much. He just... Rafael Dos Anjos, he doesn't even know really what weight he should be fighting at, whether it's welterweight, lightweight, right? His last fight was at lightweight, didn't do so well. Now he's moving back up to welterweight. And I think, you know, time's up for Rafael Dos Anjos. He used to be really good, but, you know, at the lighter weight classes, at age 39, you're almost 40 now. It's tough. It's tough. And now you're fighting Jeff Neal, who's got pretty good takedown defense, and now you're going to be probably forced to strike with a Jeff Neal. And... um uh, that's a tough fight for uh, Dos Anjos. So I'm going to go with Jeff Neal on that one. This one is interesting. Mick Debeck, Orobai, taking on Matej Rebecki. This one's interesting because Matej Rebecki is really good, but he, this Mick Debeck guy is a savage as well. This one's this one could be fight of the night right here. Mick Debeck is a strong, strong grappler. and You see his, one of his last fights against Euros Medic, he just neck cranked him. Just destroyed him with that neck crank. And, yeah, he's on a nice little win streak. Only one loss. This guy is for real. Fighting out of Kyrgyzstan. And now he's taking on the Polish. Um, Tiz Rebecki. Um, you know, he's coming off his, a loss to Diego Ferreira. And... That loss, you know, came on the ground via ground and pound, and now you're fighting a murderer on the ground in Mictebec, so I got to go with Mictebec on that one. If you can't get past uh, Diego Fajera, I think Mictebec is a little better, so I'm going to go with Mictebec on that one. Next up, Saeed Nurmagomedov taking on Daniel Santos. So Saeed Nurmagomedov, just because uh, he has the last name as our boy Khabib, and Umar Usman, um, they're actually not related just because his last name is um, Nurmagomedov and he also is from uh, um, Dagestan, Russia, but they're not actually related at all. It's a very common last name, I believe. And uh, he, he's been looking pretty good. You know, 18-3, and three, he has some losses that I feel like he should have won those fights right against uh, Jonathan Martinez. I felt like he should have he should have won that fight. Um, but, you know, taking on Daniel Santos, this is a tough fight for Daniel Santos. Like, he's only had two fights or three fights in the UFC, right? And he's two and one, And but the guys he's beat are, you know, Johnny Munoz Jr. and John Castaneda. They're not, they're no Saeed Nurmagomedovs, let's just say that. So I'm going to go with Saeed Nurmagomedov and watch out for that ninja choke because he's got a wicked ninja choke. Abus Magomedov taking on Bruno Fajera in the next one. This one's interesting because this one, both guys like to stand and bang. Abus is the favorite in this one. Um, I'm going to go with the underdog in this one. I, I really like Bruno Fajera. The guy's, he's a monster, and he he knocked out uh, the RoboCop, right? I believe, yeah, he did knock out the RoboCop. That was impressive. I know he, he lost to that Nurselton guy but you know other than that he's been phenomenal you know knocked out phil haas knocked out dustin stolfitz but you know knocking out the robocop really impressed me abus was the guy that um came in the ufc with a bang had a great finish and then they put him up and then they're like here here's sean strickland you beat dustin stoltzfus you're you're ready for sean strickland boy was that a mistake sean strickland completely destroyed the guy in this and um uh, Tough fight. Then his next fight, he can fight Kyle Bohalio, who's one of the best guys in uh, that division. Oh, those fighting nerds, they're they're real good. But his last fight, he fought Worley Alves, got the dub. Um, not too impressive, so I'm going to lean towards the underdog on this one. I'm going to go with the underdog. I'm going to go with Bruno Fajera. He hits hard, man. He's a killer. Next up, Kennedy and Jekwu taking on Chris Barnett. Kennedy and Jekwu uh, has not been looking good, not going to lie. Lost his last fight to Ovin St. Pru, who's like age 50 now. Now Kennedy is moving up to heavyweight, which in my opinion is even a harder division probably. So uh, I'm going to go with Chris Barnett on that one. Um, he's the big, he looks like a big fat dude. Don't look at his appearance. This guy can move for a big boy. 
he can do backflips, all that stuff. So he can move for a big guy, and he's got some kickboxing uh, experience as well. So I'm going to lean towards the heavyweight, um, uh, that natural he- heavyweight, not the guy moving up to heavyweight who probably should be fighting at uh, 205. So I'll go with Chris Barnett on that one. Next up, Fareed Bashra, the Bashra, the bros. I've been telling you guys about these guys, the two brothers. Fareed Bashrat is the better out of the two brothers, that's for sure. And he can grapple. Very strong grappler. Undefeated um, as a pro. Undefeated as an amateur. Very strong grappler. And I think, you know, he's going to do the exact same thing to Victor Hugo. He's going to completely dominate uh, the grappling department. But Victor Hugo, don't count him out. For a guy who's plus 425, I don't know if I agree with that. He's on a 14-fight win streak. So that's crazy. You're there. He's plus four twenty five, and he's on a f- f- fourteen fight win streak, and you almost have him at plus f- four fifty. I don't know. If that, that's crazy. The Bashra Bros are for real, but little disrespectful. Obviously, he's only had one fight in the UFC, right, and one fight on the Contender Series. But yeah, I'll go with the Bashra Bro. But do I agree with the odds? Probably not. Last fight I want to touch on is Ishmael Nardiev taking on Bruno Silva. Ishmael Nardiev. Uh, let's see here. He's got one win in his last three fights. Uh, it's his first fight, I believe. Oh, so he's he got cut from the UFC, I guess. And he had lost to Sean Brady. After the Sean Brady loss, they cut him. Had a couple wins on the regional scene here. Brave. And now he's back in the UFC, and you're fighting Bruno Silva. Bruno Silva is tough as nails. He sort of likes to drop his head and throw, but he's a guy who went um, he went the distance with Boaton, you know. But he, he does lack some jujitsu there. Um, I'm sort of leaning towards Ishmael and Nardiev because Bruno Silva is coming off three straight losses, including a loss to Chris Weidman, who's like should not probably be fighting. So if you're losing to Chris Weidman, I mean, got to go with Ishmael Nardiev on that one. But, uh, yeah, those are your picks. If you guys need a place to bet, bet US promo code Iceman. Absolutely stoked for this UFC. It's going to be absolutely insane. I just wish it was a little later, but it is what it is. Nothing I can do about it. And, uh, yeah, let's make that money. This is the card, fellas. This is the big one. This is the big one. Taporia, Holloway, Hamza, this stack on Kalaev. This is going to be insane. Shower bullet out.